This is not a magic trick. This is an object that is floating and levitating above a surface with seemingly no input. There is no power source, no strings attached, no visual effects, just pure science. So how does it work? Well, we can attribute it to one word, superconductors. Before we get into superconductors, we must first understand conductors. A conductor is an object, usually metallic, that allows the flow of charge in one or more direction. In the microscopic scale, this is because most metals are made up of a sea of electrons within which lie the individual metal cations. When an electric field is applied, these electrons are able to move or flow in a general direction. We call this general direction the electron drift. That said, there is bound to be resistance. When electrons collide with the cations, the cations vibrate due to the energy transfer. This collision does two things. It generates heat from the vibration and it also creates resistance. As cations vibrate more, they sort of play patent arrow with the electrons. The more energy they have, the more they vibrate, and the more electrons they block. The conductive ability of various materials can be classified based on the relationship between temperature and resistance, as seen in this graph. The resistance of metals increases with temperature. Semiconductors are the opposite and have lower resistances at higher temperatures, though we won't go into them in this video. Here are where superconductors come in. Above a certain temperature, they behave like normal metals. Below it, however, they have little to zero resistance. This is due to the formation of Cooper electron pairs. At low temperatures, when there is little vibrational energy, cations condense around an electron. This dense area of positive charge attracts another electron, which forms a Cooper pair. Electron pairs are harder to impede and therefore are able to travel through the material with zero resistance. Imagine them as two people walking through a crowd. If they hold hands, they become much more difficult to stop. Let's have the story done. Now we need to examine how superconductors interact with magnetic fields. When a magnet is placed above a superconductor, eddy currents are created that form an opposing magnetic field. This is possible because superconductors have such low resistances that charge is able to move freely. This is what we call the Meissner effect discovered by German physicist Walter Meissner in 1933. However, this only occurs in type 1 superconductors. For type 2 superconductors, flux spinning occurs to produce a similar effect. But knowledge of quantum mechanics is necessary to explain this phenomenon, so we won't be explaining this in much depth. Superconductors are generally split into two categories, type 1 and type 2. And there are two primary differences between these two types. The first is the critical temperature. Superconductors only exhibit their special properties when below a certain temperature called the critical temperature. The critical temperature of type 1 superconductors are listed here. Type 1 superconductors are often made of metals and metalloids. Notice that these temperatures are very near to absolute zero, and thus expensive cooling systems involving liquid helium are required to keep them functioning. Type 2 superconductors, on the other hand, are often made of metallic compounds and alloys and have much higher critical temperatures. Those with a critical temperature above 77 Kelvin are useful since they can be cooled with cheaper liquid nitrogen. The second difference is the magnetic field they create. For both types, there is a critical magnetic field below which the produced magnetic field is equal to the external magnetic field. The main difference is what happens above this critical value. For type 1 superconductors, higher magnetic fields rip apart the Cooper electron pairs and result in a sharp fall in the produced magnetic field. For type 2 superconductors, however, the decrease in the produced magnetic field is much more gradual. All high temperature superconductors are classified as type 2. The first one was discovered in 1987 and this was lanthanum barium copper oxide which had a critical temperature of 30 Kelvin. Soon, as we saw previously, superconductors with critical temperatures above 77 Kelvin were found. And thus, moving back to the video of the floating magnet, we now see that it's not magic but instead science. The magnet exerts its own magnetic field to which the superconductor opposes it by creating the appropriate eddy currents. When I first saw this clip, I thought that all the cool stuff happened in the magnet, the part that was levitating. In reality, however, it was the stage itself, the superconductor, that deserved more attention. Superconductors are all around us these days, from maglev trains to MRI machines, from complex particle detectors to electric motors and generators. With further advances in technology, we're sure to see even more amazing things in the future.